Hello, I'm sitting here with my Keurig K Mini Plus coffee brewer. I've owned this for a little over a year. I don't clean it as often as I should. I'm sure that probably uh, applies to just about everyone out there, and that's probably why you're watching this video. You're probably either a subscriber or you're just looking to figure out how to do this the right way. So let's get into it. First of all, I want you to understand that there are lots of little components to this machine that need to be clean. So this is the K-Mini Plus, which means the reservoir can come off. Now, if you don't pull this off and run it through the dishwasher or scrub it in the sink, it will get pretty grimy in there. It's just water, like you're only putting water inside it, but uh, I'll show a close-up of this. It gets pretty gross. You have to clean it out. Now, there's no real like charcoal filter like in some of the machines, uh, but there is this little filter screen which does kind of filter out like, I don't know, larger sediment, hairs, anything that just happens to float in there when the thing is open. You're not gonna be able to scrub that out, but I like rinsing it out in the sink. Of course, there's the exterior. Uh, you know, dust will collect on the top over time. That's just what happens. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind for people looking to buy one of these or brand new to Keurig systems is when coffee comes out, it goes into the cup, it actually splatters all over the place. Not like enormously, but over the course of like a week, if you come back, you're gonna find, even though you've never really spilled anything, there's always going to be some coffee residue on the drip tray, inside the drip tray, there's gonna be splatters here and all the way underneath this rim. All of this should probably be scrubbed off from time to time. The last time I scrubbed this was literally five days ago and it already looks a little bit gross. Inside the drip tray, it also looks gross. So that needs to be cleaned too. Basically just a cloth at the sink will work. Inside the machine needs to be cleaned as well. I always unplug it because we're dealing with water and electricity. You open that up and in here, even though it's a K-cup and the coffee grind is supposed to be contained inside the K-cup, there's always coffee grit and grime. That stuff is hard to get out. What I end up doing, I mean, yeah, you can get your finger into some parts of it to kind of clean it out. But there are lots of little nooks and crannies in here that you really just kind of need something skinny to get in there. So I basically, I bring down a Q-tip from the bathroom. Uh, sometimes I'll grab a paper towel and I'll just wrap the end of a knife with a paper towel and get it wet um, and just slide it through all the little nooks and crannies. The uh, Q-tip is great for cleaning some of these tiny little areas and getting into corners. And then I can also take the Q-tip and kind of touch up the needle. Now the lower needle is actually a lot easier to clean than kind of these crevices around it because it pops out. You could probably like shimmy it out just by grabbing it and squeezing it. What I do is I just kind of grab the whole machine and put my fingers behind the needle and just pull it up with my fingers. It pops right out. This thing is two compartments. So again, this is the K-Mini Plus. This is going to be different for other machines. The top portion you can like put your finger in there you know, I mean, there's a needle, be careful. Uh, you can wipe it out. Uh, but this lower portion is enclosed. Like you can't get in there. There's no access to it. It doesn't come apart. Having said that, you probably could pull this apart. I don't think it's worth it though. It doesn't want to come apart easily. Um, there are these little like hinges, but <laughs> there you go. Uh, the way that I clean this is I just throw it in the dishwasher. Every now and then, when I don't throw it in the dishwasher, I'll put a cup on the counter, fill it up with, with vinegar, and just submerge it and let it soak. That will help get some of those calcifications, those hard water deposits off of it. Here at my house, we're on a well, so we get deposits on everything all the time. Now, once you have this off, that allows you access to this little chamber. So this whole area is hollow on the inside. Basically, the water comes through the needle, comes through your cup, and this thing, I mean, you can tell, you know, it sits about there. It doesn't look like anything will get into this chamber, but it actually does. I mean, not a ton, but like over the course of a couple months, 
all of the coffee that splatters that I talked about earlier, it somehow or other, it still splatters on the inside of this. So as you peer down in there, you can see that same grime that you saw in the drip tray. It's actually in here too. And this is another one where there's really no access to it. You can kind of stick your finger up in here and wipe it down. So if you had, I don't know, like a small like disinfectant wipe, uh, you might be able to get like a corner of it in there. Um, but the way that I do it is, again, that paper towel on the end of a knife route. So I just kind of wrap a paper towel around it, get it wet, and kind of shove it down in there and wipe it all around uh, as best I can. If I have access to a long uh, Q-tip, I'll put that in there and wipe it down. It's not as important because the coffee flow doesn't actually get in there. That's just like splatter that's unfortunate. Uh, nobody sees it ever, and so even if there's a little bit of coffee grime buildup in there, maybe even bacteria buildup, it shouldn't actually make it to your coffee cup. So I don't clean the inside of this area very often. I've probably only done it three times in the past year that I've owned this, and one of those times was today. So that brings us up to my biggest pet peeve with this machine and many of the Keurig machines out there. You clean the whole darn thing and clean the lower needle, but there's no easy way to clean the upper needle. Most, honestly, most of the non-Keurig machines that I own or have used, you can remove the top needle, submerge it in vinegar, clean it, um, run it through the dishwasher. You can't do that with these machines certainly not this one so to really properly clean it the only way to actually properly clean it is to buy keurig's little cleansing pods now, i've bought those things before a couple different times i don't stock them i don't buy them very often i don't really plan on buying any anytime soon but the pod goes in and then you push this down and you run a cycle basically that needle is submerged in the pod and that's what allows the needle to get cleaned there's no other real way to submerge this needle in anything to clean it out or to descale it uh, you could run vinegar through it over and over and over and eventually that would probably work but that would take a lot of cycles and a lot of time so what i do is just good enough for me uh, you know, I'll wipe down the exterior of the needle with a wet paper towel or a Q-tip. Usually it's just the Q-tip that I was using for these crevices. Um, I'll take a paper clip or, in my case, because I'm in the kitchen all the time, we have toothpicks. I just stick little toothpicks into the holes and see if there's any grime or grit that's kind of left over in there. Every time I do that, the toothpick or the Q-tip comes out, excuse me, the toothpick or the paper clip comes out with like, uh, black coffee oils and grime on it so it needs to be cleaned uh, so if you do want to get one of those cleansing pods I'll put links to them down below in the description I don't buy them very often but I probably should with non curd branded machines it's so much easier you just pop the whole thing off and you can clean it at the sink you can clean it just soak it in a bowl of uh, cleaning solution and you can throw it in the dishwasher um, but not the case with the Keurig K-Mini Plus. At this point, I've gone ahead and cleaned everything here. I've cleaned everything here on the inside as much as I can. And I've even cleaned inside this compartment. The only thing left to do now is clean the internal tank, descale it with white vinegar. This is the only part of the cleaning process where the machine should be plugged in and turned on. Um, I've even cleaned the inside of this. So all you do is you put vinegar in. You don't dilute it. I've got this to the 10 line. You could go up to the 12 line. Keurig recommends putting it to the 10. I go ahead and close that. You turn it on. Open the lid. Nothing in the pod holder. Close the lid. You get a blinking light and start brewing. Now the vinegar is going to go down into the chamber. 
That would be, in other words, the internal water reservoir. And that's where the water is heated up. At this point, all of the water is now in the reservoir, slowly warming up to full temperature. The light here is solid, which means it's in the warming process. And you could turn the machine off right here to allow the vinegar to work only on the internal tank. What I do is I wait for the water to start pumping through. Should probably do that, huh? I wait for the water to start pumping through and then I pause it right as the first drops come out. That way I can ensure that I've got an ample amount of water in the internal reservoir and all of the tubing all the way to the top. Now it's coming. To pause it, you just press off. So at this point, most of the vinegar is still in the internal reservoir and the tubing and only a dribble has come out. So at this point, I'm going to let the vinegar sit for as long as you want. The longer the vinegar sits, the more antibacterial properties it's going to impart on everything that's on the inside of the machine and the more descaling it's going to do. If you have never done this before and you've owned the machine for like nine months, then you'll probably want to do this a lot and let it soak for a long time. But like I said, I usually do this about once every one to two weeks. So I don't really have to do it. I don't have to do two cycles. I don't let it, have to let it sit here soaking for four hours. Um, I'm going to let this soak for about 20 minutes and then I'm going to let it all come out. And then I'll do the whole process again, seven to 14 days from now, whenever it makes sense. Now, after you've let it sit for 20 minutes, two hours, four hours, 24 hours, however long you've chosen to let it sit and soak, the way to get the vinegar to come out is to not turn the machine back on or open the lid. It's to literally push this button down and hold it for about five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Now at this point, the machine is not really on, but it's pumping the water out, or in this case, vinegar. And you have to hold the button down the entire time until everything is out. And then let go before you mess up the pump because there's no liquids to pump out. And that's it. Now you're going to put water, plain water in there and do a couple rinse cycles again with no pod. You don't have to pause the, uh, the brew function, just run water through it a couple times to get all of the, uh, the residue out. So that's pretty much it. I know that seems like a lot, but only because you're watching a video, if you're actually doing it, you just kind of wipe everything down, clean it. Uh, as I described, and uh, you run your vinegar through it every now and then. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I definitely hope that this was a helpful video. My guess is if you're watching this video, you probably have been using a Kurg for a while and you need to clean it up, uh, but you also are probably making a handful of mistakes uh, when brewing with your Kurg machine. Now, I understand that they're pretty simple machines to use, but the vast majority of people that I know of are constantly making mistakes brewing their Keurig. I have an entire video that's linked somewhere right around in here uh, that I published not too long ago about the most common mistakes people make and how you can stop making them. When you stop making these mistakes, the coffee that you brew with your Keurig is actually going to taste a lot better. So it's worth taking a look and seeing what you can do better. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.